the left gonadal artery as well. Okay. Now, continuing with the veins, another major uh, vein is this one right here. This blue one right here that comes up this way. This is the inferior. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is the inferior mesenteric vein. The inferior mesenteric vein. And it comes up this way, and it merges with this vein, the splenic vein. See the splenic vein coming from the spleen? This is the spleen. Splenic vein and the inferior mesenteric vein. They come together, and they drain into this large vein here. This is the superior mesenteric vein. Superior mesenteric vein. Now, where all of these veins come together, the superior, the splenic, and the inferior mesenteric vein, where they come together, they will form here, deep in here, if you look up here, this is the hepatic portal vein. Hepatic portal vein. Okay? Hepatic portal vein. Okay, good. Uh, one other important uh, set of veins that we have here are these. The renal veins, left renal vein, right renal vein. And you can see, as you've noticed already, most of these arteries and veins accompany each other. So you see right here, uh, renal vein, right above it, the renal artery. Okay, the same thing was true with many of the other arteries and veins that you saw. Now, the inferior vena cava then ascends upward and it passes into the thoracic cavity. So we're going to turn this around now to see better inferior, the, the inferior vena cava. Okay, you also can appreciate on the dorsal surface of the inferior vena cava these. These are your lumbar veins. Okay, and then once the inferior vena cava passes up through the diaphragm into the thoracic cavity here, it will come up this way and empty and drain into the uh, right atrium. Now, here on the dorsal surface, we can see some other important things. Uh, we see, first of all, you see these loops right here? Okay. These are called, uh, these right here, these are called the ascendant lumbar veins, ascendant lumbar veins. Now the ascendant lumbar veins, as you can see, they're in the lumbar region, but somewhere around this level, okay, somewhere around this level of my stick, from here, they actually change name, and now it's called the hemiazygos or hemiazygos vein, okay? And over here we have the, uh, I'm sorry, we'll come back to this one again. This is actually called the azygos or azygos vein. And this one here on the left side, the left side is the hemiazygos vein. So this one is azygos on the right side, hemiazygos on the left side. We have another vein that comes down this way. This one right here, this is the accessory hemiazygos vein. Now all of these azygos veins, they will merge together and come this way and drain right into the superior vena cava. This is a superior vena cava. So you can see here how the azygos, this is the azygos vein, comes right into the superior vena cava. The hemiazygos, again, was this one and the accessory hemiazygos was this one, okay? Now, uh, I guess we can turn it around again to show now the last uh, set of veins of the upper limb, and then we'll talk about the veins in the neck and in the uh, head region. So, start over here with uh, these veins over here. This one right here is called the palmar uh, venous arch, the palmar venous arch, okay, will be found on the palm of your hand, okay, and they come together, they come up this way, okay, and they will form 
the uh, they will form over here this vein which is the uh, ulnar vein and over here this vein which is the radial the radial vein so this is radial vein this is ulnar vein and this is the uh, palmar venous arch okay now there is another arch okay much deeper a deeper deeper palmar arch right here and that arch comes up, ascends this way, and it forms this vein here, a superficial vein on either side. On the lateral side, we call it the cephalic vein, and it comes up all the way this way, the cephalic vein. On this side, we call it the basilic vein, and it comes up this way, Okay, the basilic vein. Uh, two other important superficial uh, veins is this one right here. This is the median antebrachial vein. The median antebrachial vein. Okay? And then you have this, this vein right here. This is the median cubital vein. Median cubital vein. Okay? Now, Let's look at this deep vein. We already talked about two deep veins, the radial vein and the ulnar vein. And they come together like this, and they form this large, important vein here called the brachial vein. Now, here where the brachial vein and the basilic vein come together, they form this vein here called the axillary vein. This is the axillary vein, which is found in the armpit region of your body the axillary vein. It's also a deep vein. But you, you can see how a deep vein and a superficial vein form it. Okay, this was your basilic vein, this is your brachial vein, and they form the axillary vein right here. Okay. Now, coming this way, continuing this way, at this area now, we call the vein the subclavian vein. Subclavian vein, and it comes down this way. Okay comes down this way to form this trunk here, forms this sh short little trunk called the brachiocephalic vein, the brachiocephalic uh, uh, vein, okay? You also have a brachiocephalic vein on the left side. However, the one on the left side is much longer. You can see right here, the brachiocephalic uh, vein, okay? Now, the subclavian vein together with this one right here, this is your uh, common jugular vein, come together and form this brachiocephalic vein, okay? Now, actually this is, the ex this is the internal jugular vein, the internal jugular vein. So let me rephrase that. The internal jugular vein and the subclavian vein come together and form the brachiocephalic trunk. Let's look on the other side. The internal jugular vein, internal jugular vein, and the subclavian vein come together and form the brachiocephalic trunk. Now, if we have an external jugular vein, we must also have an in. Uh, uh, if we have an internal jugular vein, we must also have an external one, and the external is this one right here. This is the external jugular vein here. On this side. This would represent the external jugular vein. Okay. Now, here, posterior or f just a little bit behind these two jugular veins, we have this one right here. This is the vertebral vein. You have it demonstrated on the right side. You don't have it here on the left side. However, it will be originated somewhere at this level. Okay. So, external jugular vein, internal jugular vein, and the vertebral, which is practically behind these and in the middle. Okay, now finally, the brachiocephalic trunks, again the right one is, the right brachiocephalic vein, it's much shorter than the left one, but they both merge together like this and form here the superior vena cava, superior vena cava. Um,